Hi, my name is Dear Tiagi, and in this video, I'll be explaining partial differentiation through a visual approach, and I'll also be explaining by the end of this video topics such as implicit partial differentiation and higher order partial differentiation. So to start, let's imagine we have this curve z equals 4 minus x squared minus 2y squared, which is a surface in 3D, and more specifically, this is going to be a elliptic paraboloid, right, because we have two square terms, and they're both positive, and it equals a z term, which is the power of 1. So let's imagine it looks like this, which in reality, it doesn't exactly look like this, but it looks somewhat like this, right? And let's say we want to find the derivative at this point, 1, 1, 1, okay? So when we imagine a derivative in 3D, right, for a surface, the surface is going to look something like this. So our derivative isn't going to be just a line, right? Because let's say I want to find a derivative right here, right? The line isn't the only derivative here, right? We've got a derivative here, 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 right? Because derivative is where it touches only at one point, and it's a slope at that point, right? And so it's not going to be one derivative, it's going to be a whole plane, right? Because there's going to be multiple derivatives there. And so the idea with partial differentiation is instead of taking the derivative of the entire section, right, we want to find the derivative in only one direction, right? Because again, there's going to be an infinite amount of directions we can take this derivative in, and therefore an infinite amount of lines, and which create just one plane. Okay? So with partial differentiation, we'd choose a direction to take the derivative in, right? So let's say we want to take the derivative in the x direction. So the idea is we're going to take a plane, we're going to slice it, take a plane, right? So if we slice it, right, if we take it in the x direction, we're going to create a plane where y is equal to some constant, right? Because that's going to create some kind of plane on the y direction. So we're going to create some plane, right, on the y direction. Let's say y equals 1, that would be our plane, right? Or y equals some constant. And it's going to look something like this. Okay, so y equals k is our plane. And then if we consider now in 2D what this looks like, right? Because again, we can't take derivatives in 3D, but we know how to take derivatives in 2D, which is the idea with partial differentiation. Right? We consider one variable to be constant, like y equals k, and then we can now consider this into a 2D space, right? So in 2D, it looks something like that. If we take a cross section like that, with uh, parallel to xz, right, y equals k, it looks something like that. And so therefore, at the point 1, 1, right, our slope is going to look something like this. It'll be negative, right? So this is called the partial derivative, right? Because what we're doing is we're setting our the thing we don't care about, constant, right? The input we don't care about, and then we're finding the derivative from setting that constant, right? And the symbol we give this notation wise is del of z is over del of x. So instead of d, it's del. Okay? Other notation is also um, f sub x, xy. You also have z sub x. And you also have del f del x, right? Just some more types of notation for this. Okay, and similarly for the y derivative, right, we do the same thing. So we cut it now in terms of x equals k. So we do another uh, slice, right, parallel to yz. And if we do that, we get a graph that looks pretty similar again, right? Something like that, maybe. And then we have again a slope here at 1, 1, and that's going to be our partial with respect to y. So again, the main concept is that we're taking slices and we're finding the derivative along that direction. So looking back at our function, right, how do we actually find it? So the way we compute it is, again, we take 1 to be constant, right? So here we're saying x equals k. So we take whatever we're not looking for to be constant. So the partial z with respect to x is equal to, so 4 derivative of that is just 0, right? So negative x squared, right, that's just negative 2x. And then here, negative 2y squared. So again, we're saying y is a constant. So therefore, this whole thing is a constant and it's zero. So that's our first derivative. Our second derivative, right, partial with respect to y. Here we're saying that x is constant. So these and this is a constant, so it equals zero. And therefore, this derivative is negative 4y. And that's our partial. Okay? And again, what does this mean? This means the slope of the tangent line in the x direction this is the slope of the tangent line in the y direction. Again, we're looking at only one direction. We're not looking at how it changes throughout. Only how does it change in one direction, x and the y direction. Okay? Let's do another one, but this time let's give it more inputs, right? This is, you know, multivariable. So let's try some more inputs. Again, same process. We just set one of the, we set the others that we're not differentiating constant, and then we differentiate. So let's say w is equal to 2x cubed plus 3 xy plus 2yz minus z squared. So again, notation wx, this is the 
partial with respect to x, right? So 6, x squared, right? So y is constant because we're taking it with x. So this becomes 3y. This is constant, constant. So this is our derivative there. Then y would uh, partial with y. So this is constant. x is constant, so 3x. z is constant, so 2z. That's our y. And finally, partial with respect to z, we have constant, constant, y is constant, 2z minus, uh, sorry, 2y, right, because this is constant 2y minus 2z. And those are our partials, okay? Next, let's go over implicit partial differentiation. So again, it's pretty similar to regular differentiate, or sorry, regular impartial differentiation. And the idea is if we ever have a function, such that we can't really isolate z, because in the examples before, z was always isolated. But let's say we have a function, right, where our dependent variable, whether it be y, w, or z, isn't, um, you know, on one side by itself, like so. Okay, so we use implicit differentiation for this. And the idea is here, right, z is our implicitly defined variable, okay? So whenever we take the derivative of z, like before, whenever we took the derivative of y, we added dy dx when doing implicit differentiation. Same thing here. Whenever we have a derivative with z, we just add the partial, partial z with partial either x or y, depending on what we're doing, so x or y. So it's the same thing. We're just adding this whenever we see, whenever we differentiate as z. Okay, so let's try it on this. So let's say, first let's find the partial with respect to x, right? So partial z with respect to x, okay. So first thing, right, x squared, y is constant, right? So it's just 2xy. Next, product rule, right, because we're differentiating x and z, right, when we're implicitly doing it. So product differentiation of x is just 1, so z plus z. And then plus x times the derivative of z. Again, we're just going to add this, right, whenever we differentiate. So x partial z with respect to x. Finally here, y is a constant, so 2zy. And again, we're just going to add our uh, partial z to partial x. Because again, we differentiated z squared here. This equals 0. Right now, we're going to collect all our partial terms. So collecting these, these, and we're going to move all this to this side. And then we're going to factor out, or we're going to get factor, uh, partial z, partial x, and we're going to just divide. So this gives us partial z divided by partial x is equal to, again, these moved over, so negative 2xy plus c, right, so we factored x plus 2zy, so divide that, is equal to x plus 2zy, and that's our partial. Now with the partial of z with respect to y, similar process, right, except now we're just doing for y, so x squared is constant, so x squared plus, uh, again, x is constant, so x partial z partial y now, right? And then y is z squared, so y will do product rule, right? So this is z squared plus y, 2z, 2yz, partial z, partial y, equals zero. Again, collect your terms and move them over. So we get that partial z, partial y, with respect to y, right, is equal to negative x squared plus z squared over um, x plus 2, y, z. And that's how we do implicit uh, partial differentiation. Okay, and finally, let's try to see how do we do higher order partial differentiation. So if we draw a derivative tree of this idea, right, let's say we have some function z is equal to f, x, y, those are inputs, right, then we have two paths, right, we can either take the partial of this function with respect to x, or we can take the partial with respect to y. And then if we were to take the second derivative of this, right, we could either take it, right, we could take it again with respect to z, or we could take it now with respect to uh, y, right? So the way we notate this in other notation, right, this is f x x, this is f x y. So notice how it flips, right? Here it's partial y, partial x. Here it's x, y. So just notice that. We could also do for the same thing here, right? So partial z, partial y squared. 
or we can do partial z, partial x, partial y. This is fyy, or this is um, fyx. And these two are equal to each other. And the idea is for all mixed partials, right, they're going to be equal. So for example, f z, y, x is equal to f, x, y, z. So no matter what order you do it in, right, the partials are going to be equal to each other. And that's just a fundamental rule. Okay, so let's try out an example. Right, let's say we have the function g of x of y is equal to x cubed y squared plus xy cubed minus 2x plus 3y plus 1. Okay, so let's take g of x first. g of x is equal to 3x squared, y squared plus y cubed minus 2. This is constant, right? So g of y, so x is constant. So now this is um, 2y x cubed plus uh, 3 xy squared constant plus 3. Okay, now I'll take g of x of x. So g of x of x, we're now taking the a partial of x for this function, right? So this is 6xy squared constant. Let's take gxy. So now we're taking this partial and we're taking the derivative with respect to y, partial with respect to y. So this is um, 6x squared y plus 3y squared. Now we'll do gyy. -Y. So we're taking the partial with respect to y of this function, and we get 2x cubed plus 6xy. And finally, g y of x, which we know from what I said before, should be equal to this, right? So we try that, right? So we're taking the partial with respect to x of this function. So this is 6x squared y plus 6y squared. Okay? So g of x of y is equal to g y of x. And yeah, so that's partial differentiation explained through a visual approach. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.